Hi, how are you? Hi, fucks. That's what we call you. Um, it was supposed to be folks, but then it turned into fucks because I'm a crude ass. Look at this. I can bounce now. It's getting great. I can bounce in the booth. These are my bouncing arms. This is what I do when I'm bouncing. Anyways, welcome to story time. <clears throat> Today's story time is Dragon's Mate by Nora Phoenix. This has been a much anticipated book, and for a lot of reasons. Uh, this is a spinoff series from the Irresistible Omega series. I recorded all 10 books of that. That was like 6,000 hours. And these people are, are, are uh, kind of an extension of it. Uh, it's the Haze Pack, if anyone's familiar with this. Um, now, that being said, if you haven't listened or read Irresistible Omegas, you don't have to read those in advance of this. Um, it will give you an insight into some of the characters, but this is absolutely a standalone uh, series at this point. Moving forward in this series, though, I get the feeling you are going to at least want to read the prior books in this series in particular. So I'm going to show you the cover here, then we'll get over and read the blurb. While I do that, I'm going to bounce. <clears throat> Look at that. Now, I know what you're thinking there. You're like, that man is one hot-ass dragon. But no, I was corrected. Pain us. He's a wolf. Not a dragon. That's a wolf. You know how I can tell? His, his Adonis V thing going on right there. That's... That's dragons don't have them. That's only uh, that's only wolves or people that spend all day in the goddamn gym and take steroids and never eat food. That's pretty much the only people that have them. So <clears throat> here we go. Here's the blurb. Da -da -da. One dragon, one wolf. Only ones on the cover, and they're both alphas. Surely fate must have messed up. After spending the last 200 years locked up in the family castle with his three younger brothers, Erwin is climbing the walls. Literally, he's a dragon who isn't allowed to fly, forbidden to use his magic, all to stay hidden from the rest of the world. How will he ever find his mate like this? But when he finds an injured Omega in the woods around the castle and brings him home, the spell that kept them hidden is broken. Erwin's father is a dick, and he's furious, not that he's anything new. The man has basically been angry at all Erwin's life, though why, he doesn't know. When Wolfpack Alpha Reen, that's the guy with the Adonis V, comes a knocking to demand the Omega back, Erwin is shocked by what fate whispers in his ear. Then again, the same is true for Reen. Neither one of them imagined their mate quite like this. Two alphas, a dragon, and a wolf, how on earth could that possibly work? But they have bigger problems. <laughs> it turns out Erwin's father is hiding more than a surly attitude, much more. Like an old connection with the wolves and a betrayal that runs so deep it could tear Erwin and Reen apart. Dragon's Mate is the first book in the Irresistible Dragons series. This is a spin-off from the Irresistible Omega series, but you don't need to have read that to enjoy these two as they find their way into love. The love story ends with an HEA, but the suspense plot will continue in the next book. So, that's what we got going on here. <clears throat> now, we are working on, I want to make sure, am I right about this, Trace? We just did Chapter 9, is that right? Correct. Up every time. Look at that. I got it right. We did chapter nine. Um, there's really no spoilers in this. Um, this is kind of the, not the meet cute necessarily, but the two main characters in the scene. So you can hear we voice it and all that good shit. Enjoy. Have fun. I will talk to you all soon. Peace out. Chapter nine. The strange name echoed through the hall. Leiden Haze. Erwin had never heard it before, and yet its impact was immediate. It sank inside him, affecting his body. His heartbeat increased, his blood pumped faster, and his nerves tingled. That name held power unlike anything Erwin had ever felt. And if he had any doubts left, one look at his father and uncle confirmed it. Both were as white as the milk they had served Reen. Leiden Haze, Erwin's father stammered. How did you hear that name? He's my brother's alpha mate, my brother-in-law, Reen declared, pride ringing in his voice as well as affection and respect. Who was this Leiden Hayes, and how had his name been the key to break the shield? The more Irwin heard, the more questions he had. You may leave now, the king said. My son will escort you back to your room. Get your Omega ready. He'll be allowed to leave soon. Why were they dismissing him now? That name had meant something to his father and uncle. Erwin might never have heard it, but they'd recognized it. Erwin didn't Stop. say a word. Erwin might never have heard of it. <clears throat> Were they dismissing him now? That name had meant something to his father and uncle. Were they dismissing him now? 
That name had meant something to his father and uncle. Irwin might never have heard of it, but they'd recognized it. Irwin didn't say a word as he walked Reen back and unlocked the room for him with the official key his father had handed him that morning. If only the man knew how many hours Irwin had already spent with Reen, he'd have a conniption. Riordan was still eating from the breakfast he'd been brought. Alpha, he greeted Reen, then fell silent when Irwin entered the room, closing the door behind him. Reen affectionately rubbed the Omega's hair. Finish your breakfast. They promised me you'd be allowed to leave soon. The Omega's mouth dropped Stop. open. You'll be allowed to leave. Entered the room, closing the door behind him. Reen affectionately rubbed the Omega's hair. Finish your breakfast. They promised me you'll be allowed to leave soon. The Omega's mouth dropped open. But what about you? Reen shook his head. I'll have to endure their hospitality a bit longer, I'm afraid. But eat your breakfast, Riordan. Reen's voice held authority now, so much that Irwin had to swallow. How easy it seemed to come to him. And Riordan folded immediately. No wonder. Irwin would have done the same. Yes, Alpha. Can you ask your mother to check him one last time before he leaves? Reen then asked Irwin. Maybe splint his ankle so he can walk on it for a bit? You ask your mother to check him one last time before he leaves. Reen then asked Irwin. Maybe splint his ankle so he can walk on it for a bit using the crutches? He'll have to make his way to the point past the shield to where you found him. Irwin frowned. He'll have to walk farther than that to get home, no? How else will he get back? Reen blinked. He has another way, which he would have used when he got hurt had he not been too disoriented for it. Another way? What did Reen mean? Irwin wouldn't ask. If Reen had wanted him to know, he would have shared more details. It stung, this reminder that the trust between them was so fragile and limited. I'll ask my mother, he said instead, and hurried out of the room to hide the conflicted feelings inside him. Why was he so disappointed that Reen couldn't tell him more? Why did it hurt so much, even when he understood the reason behind it? He wanted Reen to trust him, to share everything with him. He wanted honesty between them, full disclosure. It could never be, but how he yearned for it. His mother was in her room, crushing plant leaves with her mortar and adding them to a paste she was concocting, as mothers do. Room, crushing plant leaves with her mortar and adding them to a paste she was concocting. The fresh peppermint-like smell hung heavy in the room. It's for Riordan's ankle, she said. This should numb the pain enough so he can walk for an hour. She already knew then. But how? Father told you he's letting him go. Not Reen, though. Her mother jerked from her grave. It's... Father told you he's letting him go. Not Reen, though. His mother jerked up her head. Reen? The Alpha. Erwin avoided her inquisitive gaze. I didn't know he had provided us with his name. Erwin shrugged, attempting to make it seem casual. I chatted with him for a bit. Ah, to help your father and uncle. Crap. If he said yes, he'd have to tell them what he knew. She might check that he had. But if he said no, she'd ask why he was keeping things from his father. His mother put her mortar down and walked over to him, her blue eyes sharp yet kind. I sense a conflict in you. Yes. Denying that was useless. Momog. Yes. Denying that was useless. What are you doing, Mamak? I can't choose sides against him, he whispered. She tilted his chin up, studying him with a piercing gaze. He wanted to hide. She saw so much deeper than Irwin liked, into the very depths of his soul it felt. What is your heart telling you, my child? He closed his eyes and blew out a soft breath, making his mind still the way his mother had taught him. She'd only been allowed to share a little of her knowledge, only her expertise with herbal remedies and natural medicine, and this calming technique. 
She'd made him practice until it had become second nature. His heartbeat slowed down, and then the fire that lived within him ignited. It burned brighter than before, the orange flames strong and steady. And somewhere in those flames was Reen, his handsome face as clear as if he were standing right in front of Irwin. It took his breath away. My heart is telling me to stand by him, to keep his secrets and come to his aid. His mother's warm hand landed on his shoulder, her flesh so hot it all but seared his flesh, yet it didn't hurt. Hi, your heart is telling you the truth. He opened his eyes, gasping. How could his mother say that? What about father and uncle boy? They'll not accept my disobedience. Then perhaps it is wise to not share your heart with them. Erwin swallowed. They'll be furious if they find out. They'd better not, then. But he's the king. I and you are the... Ch <clears throat> They'd better not, then. But he's the king. I and you are the crown prince. They'd better not, then. But he's the king. I and you are the crown prince. This kingdom is yours, Mamak. Don't let this honor destroy even more and take it away from you. She let go of his shoulder and turned her back to him. Now let me finish in peace so Riordan can leave. He has no part to play in this. It's too heavy. It's hard to lighten up that accent. I'm not very good at it. Take it away from you. She let go of his shoulder and turned her back to him. Now let me finish in peace so Riordan can leave. He has no part to play in this. He should return to his room, or maybe to his father and uncle. But he couldn't walk away from Reen. His desire to spend more time with him was embarrassing, considering the man was mated. But Erwin couldn't help himself. He had to be with him. It didn't make any sense, and he didn't understand how he felt so strongly about a man he had just met, a stranger and another alpha to boot. But he didn't want to fight it. Reen held the door wide open to let Erwin in. Erwin's heart skipped a few beats at the Alpha's wide smile, an encouragement if not a consolation, and he forced himself to stay calm and collected. My mother is making a medicine for Riordan that will help him walk. It should be ready soon. Good. Thank you. My pleasure. They stared at each other and Erwin took a step forward. Reen's smell filled his senses, this woodsy masculine scent that made Erwin so aware of him. Is there anything else I can do for you? He stammered. Reen's eyes darkened, and Erwin swallowed. He was imagining things now. He had to be. No way would this Alpha's thoughts have drifted to where Erwin's had gone. To him, on his knees, nuzzling Reen's crotch, breathing in his arousal. He wanted to see him, smell him, taste him, touch him. He wanted to. You should go. Reen's voice was hoarse. Erwin's cheeks heated. Yes, of course. He stared at the floor. I'm sorry. Reen held his chin and lifted it. Don't be. I feel it too. He did? Oh, gods, he did. But he was mated. How could that be? Plus, they were both alphas. What they were feeling shouldn't be happening. It couldn't. But why then did Reen want him to leave? Reen chuckled. Oh, crap, it Erwin said that out loud. Reen bent in and brought his mouth close to Erwin's ear. Because if you don't, I won't be able to resist the urge to find out if you taste as good as you smell and look. And once I do that, I won't want to stop until I'm balls deep inside you. Erwin moaned. He couldn't help it, not when Reen said things like that. But then the meaning of his words registered, and he shivered as if a bucket of ice-cold water had been dumped over his head like his brothers sometimes did in pranks. I'm... I don't... He straightened his shoulders. No one knows. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to force you to out yourself. To me, it was obvious. Hopefully that was only because Erwin had done a poor job of hiding his attraction. If his father found out, he'd disown him. Traction. If his father found out, he'd disown him. 
Even so, what you're saying is impossible. I'm an Alpha, too. He had his pride, and Reen didn't need to know that he dreamed about being fucked. It wasn't proper for an Alpha, and he'd never look at Erwin the same again. Reen cocked his head. You're telling me you wouldn't want a bottom? From me? He kept his voice mercifully soft, and Riordan, who was resting on the bed with his eyes closed, was giving no indication he'd heard Reen's words. Bottom. Ah, oh, yes, that was the correct term these days. Erwin's brain hadn't... <clears throat> Bottom. Ah, oh, yes, that was the correct term these days. Erwin's brain hadn't cooperated for a moment too flustered. Correct. Hmm. I'm not often wrong about this kind of stuff. Are you certain? Oh, his cheeks were on fire now, and Erwin cursed his stupid blushing jeans, which had decided to embarrass him all over again. But as much as he wanted to lie to Reen and assure him that, yes, of course he was certain, he couldn't. Even such a small lie felt dishonorable, and he couldn't bear the thought of lying to Reen. Alphas don't bottom, he said instead, hoping it came out stronger than the squeak he'd imagined his voice to be. Reen shrugged. Alphas can do whatever the fuck they want in bed, and so can anyone else. Erwin gaped at him. What? You can't mean that. I'll admit I didn't always feel this way, but the last few years have taught me a lot. I have dear family members and friends who showed me that role patterns are bullshit and that we should do whatever makes us feel good, act on how we're wired and what we need deep inside as long as it's consensual, and doesn't involve you whoring around the neighborhood with my friends wired and what we need deep inside as long as it's consensual. Erwin couldn't believe his ears. He'd never heard anyone talk like this, let alone an alpha. So, if Riordan wanted to, um, what was the expression again? Not bottom, but top you. You'd be okay with that. No, but not because I'm opposed to it on principle. He's not my Omega, Erwin. We're not together. Erwin had trouble breathing. He had to have misheard, Reen. What? I thought you said you were. You called him your Omega, and he calls you Alpha. Yes, but not because we're together. <laughs> it's like daddy books. It's confusing. And he calls <clears throat> you Alpha. Yes, but not because we're together. I'm responsible for him, and as such, I'm his Alpha, but he's not my mate or partner. Reen held his gaze and Erwin understood. I won't tell anyone. Reen breathed out. Thank you. I appreciate that. Why did you tell me? I'd never cheat on my mate. If I had been with him, I would never have said those things to you. He shrugged, but it didn't come off as carelessly as he might have intended. I didn't want you to think bad of me. Never. Erwin promised, which was a ridiculous thing to say, and yet neither of them seemed to think so. But I'm relieved to hear it. But you still wouldn't consider bottoming for me? Erwin's throat was parched, and swallowing didn't help. I don't know. That's not a no. I've never... He'd said too much. Why had he blurted that out? Hopefully, Reen wouldn't draw conclusions, but no such luck. The Alpha's eyes lit up with understanding, and Erwin wanted to hide his face in his hands. No available partners, huh? If he'd shown a trace of mockery, Erwin would have walked out, but Reen's eyes were kind and his voice warm. Yes. My father is, uh, in charge, so no man would dare touch his son. Makes sense. And you have brothers, correct? Three, but they're all younger. I'm the oldest, the Alpha Heir. I'm not the oldest, but I'm the Alpha Heir as well. I have two older brothers, both Betas. Erwin frowned. That's quite unusual, isn't it? The oldest son. I have two older brothers, both Betas. Erwin frowned. I have two older brothers, both betas. Erwin frowned. 
That's quite unusual, isn't it? The oldest son is almost always an alpha. It used to be like that, yes, but not anymore. Really? Erwin had never heard of this phenomenon. Maybe he should ask his father about it. Not that he would get an answer, most likely, but he could at least show he knew more than his father and uncle suspected. But when he opened his mouth, Reen put his finger on Erwin's lips, the touch sending electrical sparks through Erwin's body. Please, Erwin, you need to leave. Your presence is affecting me, and my self-control is too thin. Your presence is affecting me, and my self-control is too thin. How could he leave when Reen's eyes were so dark, when his voice was so low and lustful, and when Erwin wanted nothing more than to find out what would happen if he stayed? But then his eyes fell on Riordan, and he took a step back. The Omega might not be Reen's mate, but he was close to him, and his safety came first now. Maybe once Riordan was gone, they could... He rushed out the door, his body all but shaking at the images his brain conjured up. None of them involved Erwin Topping. No matter how often he had told himself that was what he should want, what he should dream of, he never did. Least of all with Reen. What was happening to him? What power did Reen have over him?